everybody, it's Seth and Ball of Everything Money Channel. We welcome you in. Uh, we thank you for watching. We are here gonna analyze Tractor Supply Company. Obviously, Paul, this is an agricultural company. They offer home improvement, home goods. Obviously, they specialize in tractors. My DGF spray, I've been trying to get it in Tractor Supply. We're still working on that. But today, we're gonna look at that. What is that, Paul? Oh, my Lord. Are you gonna bring this up on the show, or what are you doing? If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> uh, but <All> right, <laughs> We do film these live, folks, so I have no clue what Paul is going to do or say or who he's going <laughs> to piss off in this episode. So stay tuned to the end of the video. It might be you. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so Tractor Supply bought Orschel, Orschel Farms. Um, Orschel has 3,000 people in 170 locations, Paul. They recently acquired this company. Tractor Supply, based out of Tennessee, has 1,800 locations. 1,800 locations. Hey, Seth, are yes. you from Nashville? No, but I look at today, don't I? I like their hot chicken. Because you're the only um, 10 I see. I w <laughs> That's, these are dad jokes. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us. And we're going to look at tractor supply today, folks. We're going to use our eight pillar analysis to look at the health of a company. What's going to happen to this now they acquired something? I'm guessing there's a bump in the stock price. But does this bump is this bump justified in their financials? So we'll look at their PE, their revenue growth, their free cash flow, their current assets over liabilities, all of this in our eight pillar analysis. We start by welcoming in Paul, my dear consigliere, Paul, in Mexico. Paul, you're in your Mexico home. You said it's chilly down there a little bit, right? You know, chilly is a, a relative term. It's like 70 degrees, but I have a long sleeve on. But I'd have a long sleeve on anyhow. Um, yeah, so. Yep. What Let we, me dry what my eyes. Do... Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> what we do is, um, you know, one of the, the main, w w this channel is about making money, whether it's fundamentals, momentum, chart reading. We do all of that. What we're focusing on in this video right now is the fundamentals. So everyone who is looking at this company and saying, hey, what about the hype? Whatever hype there may be, there is hype for every company, positive and negative. We're focused right now on fundamentals. What is the balance sheet? What's the income statement? What's the revenue look like? What's the cash flow, et cetera, et cetera. So if that speaks to you, great. If it doesn't, check out our other videos because we do have other ways of looking at investments. We're always growing. We're always making new videos based on every type of way of making money, not just fundamentals. So. Let's get to those fundamentals as we speak right now. Yeah, before we hit the eight pillars, we're gonna jump over to our Everything Money software that our patrons will be getting in April. It's, we're beta testing it right now. And we will, as always, we initially look at the market cap and the dividend of the companies before we get into the eight pillar analysis. Go ahead, Paul, market yep. cap for this puppy. So we have an 18.86 billion, so call it $19 billion company, and a PE to, and a dividend yield of about 1%. So we'll call it $180 million just to be cute. So they basically have to cover $180 million if you look at their free cash flow in the last year. Because guys, dividends are not always guaranteed. But the good news is in this company, they generated $1.2 billion in the last year in free cash flow. And they only pay $180 million out to dividends. So they can easily support their dividend with their free cash flow. Yeah, pillar okay, number one is PE ratio. Yep, go ahead, Paul. PE ratio is pillar number one. We want this less than 20. It's 25. So it's a little high right now. Uh, so that's an X and a profit margin of 7%, a little low. We want over 10%. Doesn't mean we shouldn't buy companies that are less than 10%. We need to understand if their business model can support that because they do have a good gross margin of 35%. That means for every extra dollar they sell, they generate 35 cents of that to profit. Obviously, that's before all overhead costs of staff, of buildings, of all these things, they generate 35%. So that's pretty solid. But so far to start, two Xs, that's okay. We will move on. Pillar number three is revenue growth over the past five years. Wow, $6.78 billion to $10.62 billion. I imagine there might be an acquisition or two in here, like you said, Seth. Um, when did they acquire Orschel? It seems just recently. I mean, within the last uh, week or so. Oh, wow. So this year. So this wouldn't be... So 2020 numbers right here would not be reflected this this acquisition so that's good so they had some good revenue growth even without that acquisition um so that is a check mark there they net bought Orsh um they bought before you get the net income pillar number four paul they bought orsha farm for almost 300 million dollars in cash oh that's not bad by the way yeah. they have excellent free cash flow so that's an easy um way for them to do it so either way i look at their net income set this is awesome 437 million up to 748 so that's oh. a check mark there uh, if you look at the last 10 years it's uh it's grown quite nicely from 222 million to 748 so it's very consistent rev profit growth over the last 10 years they've only had one down year in the last 10 years isn't that impressive only one year that they went down from the previous year of profit yeah that's, that's impressive good. 
Yeah. Pillar number, uh, lay off that mic just a smidge, Paul, for pillar number five, which is number of shares outstanding. Want this number going down, you weasel. Go ahead. 531 million to 465. Definitely Ooh, a check mark there. Right. If you look 10 years ago, they had 575. So, yeah, these guys are doing a good thing with their free cash flow. I like it. Pillar number six is current assets over current liabilities. Cash on hand, current assets, 3.2 billion. Current liabilities, 2.13 billion. So, chickity check there, son. <laughs> Our, our followers love when you do that. Uh, uh, pillar, pillar number seven. Pillar number seven is free cash flow growth. We want their free cash flow obviously growing. They we need free cash flow, Paul, so they can make these wonderful acquisitions, buy out other companies. Correct. And everybody, free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. On any other financial website, Yahoo, Y Charts, any of those financial websites you have to pay money every month for, you have to do the calculation yourself. Luckily. You're here with Uncle Paul. So if you're a Patreon, you get the software, and I added a line here to the free cash flow, the cash flow investing section. It shouldn't actually be here for all you accounting nerds, but I added it here to make it easy. We have 258 million um, five years ago and 1.17 billion check mark. So you sit there and say, "Wow, it's incredible." But Seth, look at this huge jump from last year, from the previous year. I don't like that from the sense of I wouldn't make my decision based on one year. So we do have a check, um, but here's how we have to look. We have to figure out how do we, so Seth, 258 and 1.17 billion. Yeah, and the average, uh, yeah, I got right. it. The average is, the average is 560, but why did they have such a good year, Paul? Um, I imagine a lot of people were willing to rent their own stuff last year in order to do their own work around the house and do their own work around. I don't know. I get, these are part of the questions we have to ask as we do more and more due diligence on a company. That's what's so great about the eight pillars. They don't tell you whether to buy or sell necessarily. Although for those of you who just want to buy the eight pillars, we back tested that strategy and beat the market over long periods of time, 20 years. But here you want to sit there and say, why did their free cash flow double in the last year? If you look above their cash from operations was increasing nicely over the years, but it still almost doubled in the last year. So Obviously, there were things that happened that were very nice. You had to sit there and fact that in there. But, um, you know, I'm not afraid to call 500 million the free cash flow average times 20 would be $10 billion. So this company is overpriced because if you remember, the, the, the uh, market cap was 19 billion. So it's an X on price to free cash flow ratio. Um, I, I'm, um, I like this company. This is a company that I've liked for a while from the financial aspect of it. I also don't think this company is going away anytime soon. I like the fact they've been an acquisition last year, this week, purely in cash. They're putting their cash to good use. Um, I, I'm not opposed to this. We have to understand though, you, I don't, if you're going to make it based, if you're going to make your investment based on last year's numbers, I think you're going to overpay. And I think last year's numbers will come down as time goes, let's see, let's look at this, Seth. Let's look at their quarters over the last uh, year. Go ahead. Make sure you guys are tickling the thumbs up. Tickle Paul's belly and tickle that thumbs up there on, on YouTube. Thank you so much. Love you. Hmm, this is interesting. Interesting. They had a nice increase. So they did, you know, they were up slightly, then up a lot. Look at that. So June of last year's quarter, that was, that was middle of COVID. This is when COVID started. They had a nice jump versus the previous quarter, a previous year's on um, the same quarter. These big jumps right here were very high, which I like. Um, but is it coming down more towards reality? Maybe so. The question becomes, are people going to become, if you believe that last year's COVID will get people to permanently use tractor supply more, then this might be a good company for you to buy right now. It's probably, it's a good deal right now. But if you think that things are going to settle down a little bit and their revenue growth might not be as, they might not hit a plateau, then you might want to wait a little bit for the price to come down. It's all about how what assumptions you are making as an investor. I cannot, I cannot make those assumptions for you. I make my own assumptions. I see big jumps like that because of one-time events. And unless I read, as I do more due diligence, unless I read something where they say, you know what, here's why we think it's permanent. I'm going to discount last year's growth tremendously because it was because people were at home and they had free time and they might've said, oh, let me do this around the house instead of hiring somebody to do it because I don't have the money to go hire a contractor. Let me go do it myself. Does that make sense, Seth? Yeah, I did the same thing. You know, once you're sitting around doing stuff, you might as well go outside and start working on your lawn. And uh, yeah, I spent money on my tractor and got accessories and things of that nature. So I can see how other folks are doing that. So 
Yeah, nice, Paul. Well, folks, if this resonates with you, that's our take on Tractor Supply. If you love what you're seeing and hearing, join our Patreon. The description is a link below, everythingmoney.com, uh, patreon.com slash everythingmoney. Uh, you can join the three tiers, get access, more access, exclusive access to Paul and I and Trader Mo. see all of our trades, our portfolios. The top tiers, Paul, as you say in, uh, in, in other videos, our top tier patrons are making... <laughs> making a good amount of money and paying for their Patreon almost instantly with their options. You can learn new things. You can level up your investings. And as I always say, Paul, if you feel alone in your journey of investing, if your friends are not into it, your family is not into it, you can join our Discord and Patreon community and bounce ideas off each other, watch a Patreon-only videos that we do, and really, really learn. Paul, now's the time to learn. Any any time of your life, it can learn. We have 20-year-olds. We have 50-some-year-olds. And um, it's been an incredible community. And we welcome you in. Uh, we are also giving away two Teslas Mimi. this year to patrons, not subscribers, the patrons. Two of you will be walking away driving new Tesla Model 3s. And uh, Paul and I will be doing a promotional video next Friday. Paul, I'm getting stoked for that. I'll give you all the details. So anyway, um, that's our take on Tractor Supply. Uh, we love you guys. We appreciate the support. We'll see you on the Discord channel. And as always, tickle the like and subscribe. We love you guys. Appreciate it.